When Sean first contacted me about coming and speaking to you folks this afternoon, maybe speaking today, he was so excited. He was so enthused about the idea of me coming and talking about PowerPoint because he knows that speakers have this natural aversion. Professional speakers have this natural aversion of PowerPoint. So he, we were on the phone, we were talking back and forth. He says, hey, I've got a mind map I've been working on, and I want to show you what I'm thinking of, so maybe you can cover some of these things. So this is what Sean sends me. <laughs> so I said, Sean, maybe this isn't exactly where we want to go. So I sent him back something. I said, this is my plan. My plan is simply this. I want to turn all you folks into PowerPoint superheroes. I want to make you realize how incredibly powerful it is to take your words and attach images to them that burn into your audience's mind. They, they take your ideas and they deliver them so powerfully to your audience. So that's what we're going to talk about this afternoon. Now, one of the things that I have to deal with all the time is I get people sending me a lot of their raw PowerPoint or the PowerPoint they've worked on. So I work with executives, I work with other speakers, I work with sales teams, and they send me this PowerPoint. And I almost, it's almost like, maybe you shouldn't. Just hit delete. But they send it to me and I get to see all the crap. I get to see all the lousy stuff. And it's very negative, it has a big effect on me. So sometimes I think that I'm a PowerPoint proctologist. <laughs> But this afternoon, and right now, we're not going to focus on the negative quite so much. We're going to focus on the really good stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show off a little bit. I want to show you how incredibly cool it is to do PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10 super cool PowerPoint things we're going to talk about today, and we might be able to get to some of them this afternoon. And some of them, many of them, actually, you're going to be able to do yourself. It's just simple, simple stuff. Once you realize the combination of how images and words work together, you're going to be able to do a great job with them. But some of the stuff I'm going to show you, you're not going to be able to do. So what do you do? You call me up and you send me some money and I'll do them for you. It'd be wonderful. <laughs> it's a great opportunity. So let's get right to the... Oh, before we get started, I'm going to put this on because we've got... We're going to get into some nasty stuff. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Here, here, do you want to hold that for me, Kevin? Oh, thank oh yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. thanks. <laughs> we're not going to shake hands later, are we? No, that's it. Okay, so let's get started with this thing. Here's how we're going to do this. The first thing I want to tell you is video is so cool in PowerPoint now. PowerPoint does a really, really great job with video. And you can introduce yourself with a video. Some of the big, big speakers, they, have, they spend millions and millions of dollars creating these incredible videos. Well, I have access to some of Hollywood's top talent. I mean, I, I, I'm a schmoozer. I know how to talk to these people. So I had a really, really top tier speaker, <coughs> excuse me, put together a video for me. So this is what it looks like. Hello, my friends. I'm Professor Hans von Puppet. I just went to one of those PowerPoint solution workshops by Tom Nixon, and it was unbelievable. No sleeping. It wasn't boring. No throwing rotten fruits at the screen. It was incredibly, well, super duper. And I learned something. PowerPoint is, in fact, cool. Very cool. And now I know how to do it. That cost me $5. That's Fiverr.com. And just doing the right thing, getting a little clip of a video that introduces you or, or brings you on or, or makes a transition in your presentation is very, very easy to do now with just a little bit of thought and preparation. We'll talk about that a little bit this afternoon. Number two, create a walk-in experience. This is something that everybody can do. When you go to a meeting and you're setting up, you're getting ready, your audience is coming in, they're getting settled. It's kind of like when you're in the theater and, and you're sitting there chomping on your popcorn and they're putting all those images up there to try and sell you on the hairstylist and the car dealer and all that. Well, you can do something like that with your visuals. I've created some things. Sometimes we've seen them here at NSA, some of the walk-in vi uh, visuals. And they just rotate through them about every 10 seconds. You go through a few. What it does is it implant some basic ideas about your organization or about your message with the audience before you actually get a chance to walk on. So all of a sudden, they're already warmed up a little bit about your speech, about what you're talking about. A walk-in presentation like that is a really easy thing to do and it's very, very effective. So that's the kind of thing that, uh, that all of you can do. 
Uh, number three, use a push transition. This is a fun thing. Transitions are when one slide moves into another slide, and most of them are horrible. Most of them just drive you crazy after a while. But this push transition is kind of cool. It's almost like you have a panorama of an image, and you're using your camera to kind of zoom back and forth. This is what it looks like. So here's this beautiful thing. This is the guy that lives inside my computer. Normally he doesn't show, but he's going to go, look, there he goes. He pushed that over like that, and he's going to push it back. So you can do this kind of thing. Oh, he's not there. Where is he? Oh, there he is. So he's taking a little break. So you can do that. You can create a whole little scenario with these animations, with these transitions. And this is something that you may or may not find useful. Number four, make transparent shapes. This is something I was very surprised. The more and more I got into helping people create their visuals, I realized people didn't know how to do this. And it's a very effective thing. You create transparent shapes in PowerPoint that kind of block an area, that kind of reduce what's going on in the background so you can place type on top of things. If you have a very confusing background or if you have, say, a huge set of data and you want to show just a little tiny piece of that, create a transparent shape that just blocks most of it out, but it still shows that it's back there. It's kind of a neat little thing. Create a moving background. This is another one. If you watch Fox News or if you watch CNN, you see those talking heads with the background kind of swirling. Well, you can do that too in PowerPoint. It's kind of a cool little thing. You just put a huge background back there and you make it rotate very, very slowly. It can be a subtle little thing. Or if you don't want to do it quite so subtle, you can do something a little bit more unnerving for your audience. Get them a little, a little, after a while you want to get that off the screen, so we're going to move on. Number six, this is, this is a fun one. I really like this. This is something that you can actually create magic in PowerPoint. So splitting a background. This is a background in PowerPoint. It's just an image that I put up there, but it actually is, a, there's a split in it that you can't see because it's a perfect match. And that's where the split is right there. So what you can do with that is you can actually do magic. So let me, can you press that button right there and let's see what happens, just that button. Oh my goodness. Look at how cool that is. You can have things appear out of nowhere. Even Joe Turner can't do that. That's a, that's re this is real magic. He has to do stuff with actual props. Oh, <laughs> maybe later we'll show that, okay? So a split background is a very powerful thing you can use to have things come in halfway through the screen. It draws a lot of attention to them. So you can make words disappear, just like you can make cows up here. You can make your words disappear. And this is something we're really going to talk about this afternoon because the huge problem with most PowerPoint presentations is people put too much stuff on the screen. PowerPoint is a visual medium. It's like television or like the cinema. You don't go to the cinema or you don't, go to t you don't watch your TV to read a book. You look to, to look at images. The images will embed in your mind along with a, a spoken message. So we're going to make words disappear this afternoon. It's going to be a very, very, we're gonna I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in those clogged up slides that you have. But we take a slide, we'll take a slide like this. It's got lots and lots of words. This is a slide a client sent me a while back. And we ended up not doing, not doing this incredible thing with huge images and stuff like that. We just made it look a little bit more reader friendly. And now the speaker is not tempted to turn around and read from the screen, which we all know is the thing that everybody hates with a passion. So we're going to talk about how to do this this afternoon. It's very simple, it's very effective, and it's a, it's a real tool that you can put in your toolbox if you use PowerPoint. Number eight, discover the meaning of numbers. This is great too, because what happens is people do stuff like this, and then they take their little red pointer. I think I've got a red pointer here. No. They take their little red pointer and they point to this number up here, which nobody can read anyway. And they talk about this, and they talk, oh, there, somebody, where? Secret Service is here. And so we have to get the, we, there's times when you want to show this data. You want to show that you've done the homework. You want to show that you've, you've actually got the huge data set behind it. But you have to make sense of this for your audience. Your audience doesn't know how to find their way through this. So we take slides and we do things like this. We take and we distill the idea down so even if you saw that data set, you can see exactly the point that we're trying to make. And we make numbers meaningful instead of just dumping them on the screen. Number nine, th this is, now this is the fun stuff. We make up stuff. Now, as speakers, we want to be truthful, but it's so much fun not to, to stretch the truth just a little bit. So let me show you what we can do. This is kind of a fun thing. So here's a set. Here, this, everybody, all speakers in the whole world is re are represented by that circle. So that's that, okay? Then here, over here are the people who make the big bucks. So we're thinking, 
who could be in the middle there? Who's in that, that really good section? Well, of course, it's NSA Georgia speakers. Those are the people that make the huge bucks. So whether or not you have data to support this, you put it up in the screen and people go, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you can really carry this to an extreme. So I know in this crowd, there's lots of people who like Ronald Reagan. So you can do politics, right? So if you like Ronald Reagan, you've got this. People with hearts, right? And over here, people with brains. So who would be in the center? Of course, it's conservatives. But wait, wait, there's somebody out here. Who could that possibly be? It's Al Gore, of course. But now, you don't want to antagonize people. You want to be, you want to be fair. So if you like Hillary Clinton, OK, same thing. People with hearts, people with brains. And in the middle are our liberals, of course. But there's still somebody out here. Who could it possibly be? It's still Al Gore. <laughs> this guy can't cut a break. So you, you can play around with all sorts of stuff like that. And, and, and I've got to give some props to, to John Schwartz, because John showed me how with visuals and the things that you can do, you can really amp up the humor without necessarily telling jokes or being overtly a clown or a funny man. Just put it on the screen. Just create interesting situations on the screen. So let's get going. Here's a quote. This is another one I love to do. So you can take somebody else's words, and as long as you attribute them to that person, you can use those words in your presentation. And it makes you look so smart. It makes you look like you really, really know stuff. So here's a quote I like to use. <laughs> that Des Thornton is so cool. Now, I, I don't. I think at one time or another, he has said all those words. So this is not totally inaccurate. But one of the really cool things about doing this is you can have an entire conversation. It's not just a one-sided thing. You can do something else. Look, here's Des. He knows, see? So you can have a conversation back and forth. It's, a, it's such an easy thing to do, and it, and, it, and it connects with the audience so well. This type of humor is... You can build it in. You don't have to necessarily remember your jokes. You can build it into a presentation, and it can work very, very well. So, okay, here's a bonus. We need to make a strong close. Everybody needs to make a strong close. I've got a video we're going to show, and this is a testimonial video. I had one of my superstar speaker friends. His name is uh, Dan Jordan. His son, uh, Matt, is uh, here with me today. He's a real good friend of mine. Dan did a testimonial for me a while back, and I use it as kind of a lure to get people in. And I want to show you this, and we can talk about how to do things like this this afternoon. So here we go. Hey guys, if you're lucky enough to go to that Tom Nixon deal that we just saw, it's unbelievable. It's one of those PowerPoint things that just it blows your mind. When you leave there, your mind will literally be blown. It's that good. So that's a testimonial. Oh, so. <laughs> we had to bring back Barack for a little bit. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this afternoon, and then I'll be done. This afternoon, we're going to talk about your stuff. Hopefully, some of you will bring your slides, your presentations. We'll take a look at them. We'll see what we can do with them. We'll see how we can tighten them up, make them a little bit more effective. And that'll be a lot of fun. Then we're going to also, there's four points that I like to make when I'm talking to people about creating good PowerPoint. The first one is write a speech. But you guys all know how to write a speech since you're pros, so we're not going to cover that too much this afternoon. We will cover how to use few words, how to pull all those hundreds of thousands of words that you like to put in your slides, get them out of there, and just leave the ones that are the most important. And we're going to talk about big, clear images, where to find them, how to use them, how to put them on the screen. That's a real important component. We're also going to talk about meaningful numbers. We saw this slide earlier. We're going to talk about how to, how to distill down numbers out of your data sets and turn them into something that's, that's meaningful to your audience. We're going to stop doing things like this. We're going to stop doing things like this. We're going to stop doing things like this. And one of the really cool things this afternoon, if you come to this afternoon for anything else, I've got this incredible storytelling thing that I want to talk to you about. It's a TED speech, so I'm using somebody else's speech, but I'm attributing it to him. I'm telling you all about him. I'm using somebody else's speech, a brilliant speech that this guy made with brilliant visuals. And we're going to de, de, Deconstruct it. We're going to take it apart and take a look at exactly what he did. The guy's name is Ron Finley, and he used visuals that anybody in this room could make easily. There's nothing special about the visuals, but what he did with them and when he presented them was absolutely brilliant. It was just 
almost the perfect speech. And I want to talk to you about this and how you, if any of you are keynoters in here and you think PowerPoint's not for me, when you see what this guy did, you'll go, maybe this is time for me to reconsider that. So we're going to talk about storytelling. We're going to talk about humor. And of course, everything in humor these days has to do with angry cats. So we'll talk about how that works. And we're going to have a great time. So I encourage you to register for this afternoon. Des said, uh, it, we, you got to come, you got to have a good time. You never know who's going to be there. It could be anybody could show up, even this guy. <laughs> so Sean, that's it. My time's over. Thank you very much.